And the final task in assignment one is going to be to take a look at making a scenario plan for a particular for the site that you're looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off that. We're going to zoom back in here to our site. And we can go ahead and turn off the, the buffer. Now over here, what you may notice is we've been working in this explore tab. There's also a build tab, an analyze tab, a report tab, and a manage tab. Now, this is really why you use Urban Footprint. Now, of course, everything we've done so far in Urban Footprint is very useful for analysis. But the analysis can be done in other programs pretty easily, like in in ArcGIS, of course, Urban Footprint is relatively easy uh, to work with once you, you know, get to use it. I think it's actually easier than ArcGIS. Um, the data is already preloaded for you, so that makes it easier in some ways in ArcGIS because you have to go find it. Um, but what this does relatively is easily, and what it's really built for is scenario planning and this is what we're going to use it for in the capstone final project so we're going to kind of get started here in assignment one and then really assignment two is what you'll be building on you know for your particular site or sites the corridor you're working on you're going to really do this more in, in assignment two and that's going to be part of your that that assignment two will also be part of your final your final project okay so we're gonna get started with it here but you're gonna get a lot more you know time to practice this later in the semester go ahead and click on the build tab and what you're gonna do here is you're gonna you're gonna have to create a selection of the parcels now in this case there's one two three four five six seven eight nine parcels okay I'm not including this one here because that is a Salvation Army. Uh, so if I go to the satellite view, you can see that there's a building there, okay? And that is a already an, an established building, but this is a vacant site. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and draw, I'm gonna use the point selection actually. I can draw a box around it, but I, I wanna use a point selection. I'm going to zoom in even further. Okay, I'm going to go back to the pan tool. I'm going to zoom in as far as I can so I can accurately select the parcels that I want. Okay, now I'm going to be holding the shift key as I do this. Okay, you can see the different parcels. So there might be more than nine. Let's see. I'm going to hold the shift key. I'm going to select that one. One. No, oh, I did not. Okay, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, hopefully these should all. Okay, they don't. <laughs> they don't highlight themselves immediately. Um, there are nine, by the way. Uh, but you know, they they don't. They didn't highlight themselves immediately. But I, I am holding the shift key down as I do this. Um, so that is, um, that is, I think, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so now that I have selected all of those parcels, okay, I'm going to create a development scenario. It's a vacant site. You can see it on the aerial, uh, or I'm sorry, the, you know, the satellite uh, image. You could either select a building type, so I can do a high-rise mixed-use building, a town, urban townhomes, live work. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different options here. Uh, you know, many, many different options, and you could see the, the the densities here, the dwelling units per acre, the employees per acre, 
you can also select different place types, okay? And so city mixed use, um, town mixed use, village mixed use, you know, really the names are not as important as the densities, okay? Um, 93 employees per acre is a lot, you know, 48 dwelling units per acre is, is a decent amount. Um, and, and that means that you have them both together. So I, I'm going to, because this is close to downtown, I'm going to create a scenario, and you can see urban mixed use is, is a lot higher than city mixed use, 231 employees per acre compared to 93. So I'm going to try this as a city mixed use scenario, and I click on that one, and it tells me here that by selecting this one, um, I have 3.69 acres um in in this area that i've selected so it, it tells me i just have basically about three and a half acres and three and a half times 48 um or 3.69 times 48 gives you 177 dwelling units and 3.69 times 93.3 employees per acre gives me 344 employees per acre okay the original base was zero there were no uh, dwelling units or employment because these are all on um, this is a vacant lot so I'm gonna click on I can reclassify that but I almost made an error I don't want to change I'm in what's called the base scenario okay so I don't want to change my base scenario I want to create a new scenario and I've done this before and so um, you know, if you mess up, you can always go back and revert to the base. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scenario from the base scenario. Okay. And I'm going to click over here. And then I'm going to click back on here onto the build. And now it didn't select them for me, right? So now... I go to my base scenario, it's gone, everything is gone. I gotta go back and, and redo it all. Not a big deal, right? Um, I'm gonna turn off my base canvas. I don't need that. Scenario canvas, um, I can leave that. So, oops, I'm gonna go in here again. I'm gonna click on the build tab i'm going to go back here i can i can draw a polygon let's do it with a polygon okay i don't want to get these other lots so i'm going to draw a polygon and these some of these are pretty narrow lots i'm going to draw a polygon here and great it selected the ones that I wanted, and it didn't select that lot up there. So that's good. That worked for me. I'm going to apply this to the um, the uh, city mixed use. Again, you can select here. You can select something different if you want, or you can undo that and you know pick it as, as a building type instead of a place type if you want. But I, I like that city mixed use scenario for this area. Okay, and I'm gonna paint those nine features. These are the features, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know why it doesn't call them a lot. You should call them a lot, but it calls it features. So we're gonna paint those nine features. And now, remember, I'm in scenario one. Okay, and it changed, you know, it changed the color. Um, you know, sometimes the colors, I think, did that work? It looks like it may have worked. Okay. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the Analyze tab, and we can analyze a whole bunch of things. 
from the land consumption to the energy use, the water, transit accessibility. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and run the land consumption analysis. And that, that one usually runs pretty quick. These can take a while longer, so you may have to run and come back to it. Um, let's try transit accessibility. We'll click on the run there. You can see it says right here that analysis is running. It could take 10, 15 minutes. I, I hope it doesn't take that long. But if you run them all, it, it certainly will take you a good you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. So you can click all of them, run every single one of them, and leave and come back later and, and check it out. But um, for now, I just want to take you through. And what it's doing is it's comparing what it was before to what it is now. Now, the way that I did this was I zoomed into this area. And, I'm, and, you know, I can compare the whole neighborhood as well by selecting a larger area of comparison um, to see, you know, the, the different impacts to the energy use, water use, or the uh, emissions, or what, whatever it is over here, I can, I can check all that out. But while that's running, I'm going to go over to the reports. And this is the summary statistics report. It tells me this one is still running. This one is already run. And so it tells me in this scenario, I am... These are the summary statistics. I'm adding 300 population, 177 dwelling units, um, 166 households. So there's, you know, not every dwelling unit is occupied. So, you know, it, it, these are basically just based on formulas. Um, 344 new jobs. And so these are some pretty useful summary statistics. We can export these into an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to export that, and I'm going to go ahead and open that spreadsheet over here. It's opening in Excel. And it shows me here. I like, I like looking at it in Excel better because it shows me in my base scenario I didn't have any population. Um, I didn't have any dwelling units. I didn't have any jobs. So it just tells me the differences. Now, if I did, it would show, you know, th how many different types of jobs and whatnot. And it provides some estimates in terms of building area, retail. Um, you know, it gives you different scenarios. And, you know, these may or may not be accurate. But it's, again, it's a tool to help understand what's going on. Now, let's go back here. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna click on the land consumption one, and it shows me here that under the land consumption one, um, it says land cover change in acres. So I, you know, I, I changed about four acres. Um, Land, urban land consumed four acres, greenfield land consumed zero acres. Okay, so some of these things are more and more or less useful. Um, again, you can export that as a spreadsheet. And when you open up as a spreadsheet, you may find that there's more useful information in here than what you can even see over here. Uh, but in this case, it's it's not. It's it's all pretty much the same. Now in this one, it didn't. It just put in scenario one because if I go back here, I didn't have the base. The base scenario wasn't highlighted, um, which I think I'm not sure why that happened for this particular one. Okay, now the transit accessibility one is done running. So okay, so this shows you uh, a bunch of useful information here percent of residents within 10 minutes, um, school access, percent of, you know, it, it gives you a bunch of, of information here, uh, employment access, jobs within 30 minutes, you know, and, and so again, not all of this information is particularly useful. Um, this would be more useful if I were comparing it to 
say a larger area like the entire downtown or even the entire city although the the, the larger the geographic area that you get the um, more challenging it is to interpret the results so there's there's like a goldilocks uh situation with urban footprint where you don't want the area to be too large and in some cases if you're looking at like transit you don't want the area to be too small in our case the area is a little too small because we just looked at one particular site because i was really mo mostly interested in these summary statistics to see how many housing units would be created how many jobs would be created um so we'll look at that again that'll be more useful when we do the corridor so we'll look at that again in assignment two so what I want you to do for this um, this last one is to, at a minimum, you know, download the summary statistics spreadsheet. Again, export it over here and the land consumption one and export it there. And go ahead and submit um, this spreadsheet here um, as well as the other uh, spreadsheet here. Uh, both of these spreadsheets you're going to want to submit uh, into the canvas as part of your submission for assignment one. So that's the end of assignment one and um, hope that you are uh, enjoying and, and starting to get to learn Urban Footprint.